What's up everyone, my name is Dave, I'm a data scientist and in this video I will show you how to install Anaconda on your Mac. Alright, so here's what we'll cover in today's video. I'll first give a brief introduction about Anaconda, then I'll show you how to install Anaconda on macOS. I'll give you a quick overview, we'll run some Jupyter Notebooks, then I'll show you some Conda commands and finally I'll show you how to run Python in VS Code using an Anaconda environment. So let's start with a brief introduction about Anaconda. So first of all, Anaconda is a distribution of the Python and R programming languages and it's specifically made for data science. Anaconda lets you install or update packages independent of system libraries or admin privileges. This also makes Anaconda very convenient for when you have a company laptop for example with restricted access. And lastly, environments. It's really easy to manage different versions of Python and different environments on the user level. So for example, you can install multiple versions of Python. So you can have a Python 3.8 and also a 3.9. And with Conda, it's really easy to manage all of those environments, but more on that later. All right, so now I'll show you how to install Anaconda on your Mac. So we'll start off by opening up the browser and going to the Anaconda distribution page. I will leave a link uh, in the description. So here we are on the page for macOS, which has a big fancy download now button. But I've noticed that if you go all the way to the bottom, there are different versions for like the, the classical version of MacBooks and MacBooks that have the M1 chip. So I'm not quite sure if the button over here will download the correct version. So depending on the system that you have, pick your version here. So I'm currently on a 2020 MacBook Pro with an M1 chip. So I'll go with this one. Now the download prompt will open up and I'll save it to my downloads. Once it's done, we'll open it up in the folder and then we'll just double click it to run the installer. It will give you a warning to check whether this software can be installed on your system. This probably has something to do with the M1 version. I'll click allow and then you just click through the installer. So continue, continue, continue. You have to accept the license, agree. Then it's fine to install it for me only. I'll continue. I recommend that you just leave it to the default uh, installation location and then you hit install. It might give you some other prompts that you have to accept. It also asks you to install data spell. This is optional. This is an IDE by JetBrains for, uh, for data science. You can just ignore that for now. Okay, so Anaconda was already installed on my MacBook, so I didn't show the end screen, but it should give you a summary saying that Anaconda is installed successfully on your Mac. All right, so now I'll give you a quick overview of Anaconda. So what we can do, we can start up by opening the Anaconda Navigator. I can do this by opening up Spotlight and type in Anaconda and here you'll see the Navigator. So I'll open it up. Okay, so here's an overview of some of the packages that are included. I won't go into depth into each of them in this video, but here you can see some popular IDEs for writing Python code, for example. So you have VS Code, you have PyCharm, uh, Spider. Those are all IDEs that you can use to write Python code. You have the popular Jupyter Notebooks and Jupyter Lab. There's also RStudio for if you use R code. All right, so I'll now show you how to run Jupyter Notebooks and I'll show you two ways uh, how you can do this. First, I'll show you the approach that most people use. And then secondly, I'll show you the approach that I use, which I think is way more convenient. When I'm in the Anaconda Navigator, I can just here under Jupyter Notebook, click launch. What this will do, this will open up a terminal and then fire up your browser um, running on a Jupyter session. And by default, this will open up in your user folder. So what you can do from here is then from here, you can navigate to the folder where your project is located or where your notebooks are stored. But this way you always have to navigate to the folders and maybe your project is like somewhere deep down another folder with some other projects. And it's just not very convenient to always browse to your projects by going through your user folder first. All right, so I'll now show you another way of how you can open Jupyter Notebooks. So now quickly show you how to do that. So I found this GitHub repository with some pandas exercises and I cloned it into my downloads folder. So here I have some notebooks and then the pandas exercises. So say for example, you're looking online and you find an interesting notebook that you want to try out. You download it to your computer and now you want to open it up in a Jupyter Notebook to run it yourself. So how do you do this? You go to the folder which contains your notebooks. Then you click on the icon right here and then you select new terminal tab add folder. And what this does, this will open up a terminal window within this specific folder. And I can also list all the files that are in here. So here you can see all the files. So now what we can do, we can type in Jupyter Notebook. And what this will do, this will open up a Jupyter session for us within this folder. So now you have all the files here and you can just click through them, open them up. And then here you have the exercise with solution exercises, Let's open up the exercise with solutions, for example. All right, so now we're in the notebook and what we can see if we just run the notebook here, it works fine. So that is how you run a Jupyter notebook using Anaconda. 
You first go to the folder where your notebooks are located, you open a new terminal window and you launch Jupyter Notebook. Alright, so now let's talk about Conda commands. So what is Conda? Well, Conda is a command line package and environment manager that installs and manages Conda packages from the Anaconda repository as well as the Anaconda cloud. It installs these packages in a binary format, which means there is never a need to have compilers available to install them. And besides Python packages, you can also install other software with Anaconda, for example C, C++ or R. So if you're a Python user, then you are probably familiar with pip. And pip is very similar to Conda, but they also have their differences. So what are these differences? Well, pip lets you install packages from the Python package index. And as I just mentioned, pip can only install Python packages, whereas Conda can install packages from all different kinds of software. Then another big difference is the amount of packages that are included. So the Anaconda repository has about 1500 packages that are available, while the Python package index has over 150,000 packages uh, available that you can choose from. So here's my personal recommendation on how I use pip versus conda. So I use conda to create environments, which I'll show you later. And I use pip to install all the different Python packages. All right, then let's briefly talk about conda environments. Well, a conda environment is an isolated workspace with specific Python and package version to make sure everything works together. So for example, you can have one environment with the pandas version of 1.3 and another environment uh, in which you run pandas with version 1.4. And by using environments, you basically make sure that your scripts don't break. So for example, if you install a few Python packages for a new data science project, and later you start another project where you need, for example, different versions of the packages. And if you don't use environments, you can override those old um, packages that you had installed, which can cause the old scripts from your old projects to break. And that's why it's best practice to always use environments for each project so you can isolate them and make sure that nothing breaks. It's just a very controllable way of managing code, versions and scripts. And you can have many different environments on your computer. Conda also lets you manage these environments so you can create, export, list, remove, update, etc. All right, so I'll now show you how to get started with Conda. Uh, so we'll start off by opening up Terminal. And the first thing that we'll do is run Conda info. So we can see the version here, for example. And what I'll now show you is how to create an environment. And remember that all these commands will be available in the cheat sheet that I've linked in the description. So the way to create a Conda environment is by running the following command. You run Conda create dash dash name, then the name of your environment, and then you can specify which Python version you wanna use. So let's create an example Anaconda environment with Python version 3.6. I'll hit enter. It will collect everything. It will give you an overview and then you basically have to accept it by pressing the Y and then enter. All right, so now it's done. So then once the environment is created, what we can do is we can run conda env list. And this will give you a list of all the environments that are uh, available on your system. And basically we can choose from one of these environments to activate them and then run Python code within those environments. So let me clear that up. And now to activate the environment, we run conda activate and then the name of your environment. So we'll activate the example. What you can see is that now before your username, you will see the name of the environment. This means that from now on, everything that we do will be within this environment. So what I can now do is I can check what is already installed in this environment by running conda list. And here you can see everything that is installed. So we have Python version 3.6, there's pip installed, and there are also some other default packages already installed. All right, so let's say for example, you wanna start a data science project within this example environment, and you need some packages to get started. You need, for example, pandas and you need scikit-learn. So how do we go about that? So now once we're in the environment, we can basically install Python packages just like we would normally do. So we can just use pip install pandas to install pandas, for example. And this will install pandas using pip within the Anaconda environment. All right, so pandas is installed. All right, and then for example, we do pip install scikit-learn. And this will install scikit-learn within our environment. All right, and now we basically have an isolated Python environment with both pandas and scikit-learn installed, which we can use to run our projects in. So let me clear this up. If I now run Python, you'll see that we're running Python on version 3.6 and I can import pandas without any errors. When you want to exit out of your conda environment, you can run the command conda deactivate. All right, but this was an example of how to run Python within the terminal. And now you're probably wondering, okay, that's cool, but how do I use that in an IDE, for example, VS Code? Let me show you how to do that. 
So I'll start off by opening up VS Code. And I just created an example script here. Very basic, we import pandas and we print the basic data frame. And by default, this script will run under the base environment of Anaconda. This is also what we can see down here. It says we're on Python 3.9 and we are in the Conda environment called base, which is the default environment. So to change this, we can click down here and this will open up a list with all the available environments. And if you just created your environment and it's not up here, you can click the refresh button. And from here, we can see our example environment that we just created. So I'll click here. So by selecting the environment, the environment will switch. And what we can see down here in the bottom is that we're now in our example environment and running on Python 3.6. And we can save this to our visual code workspace. So the next time you open up this file within this workspace, it will automatically pick this environment. So what I can now do if I run this code, we'll see that everything works just fine. You can even see here that we're using the example environment that we've just created. All right, so here's the Anaconda cheat sheet. In this cheat sheet are some of the most used commands. Here is also a getting started page from the official Anaconda website. This is a 20 minute guide that will show you how to get started with Anaconda and let you try out the major features of Conda. It says here that you should understand how Conda works when you finish this guide. So I'll also leave the link to this page in the description. All right, and that's it. You now know how to install Anaconda on your Mac. You know how to run some basic Conda commands. You know how to run Jupyter Notebooks, create environments, and even hook those environments up to VS Code to start your data science projects. If this video helped you out, I would really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll be making more videos related to Python, data science, and machine learning. So if that's something you're interested in, you should definitely subscribe. See you next time.